uh, I'm talking to Dr. Todd Zakrizik, who is a research associate professor at the uh, Department of Family Medicine for University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, and he's also Hill. someone who's done a great deal of research in teaching and learning and uh, has been involved in running teaching centers, uh, runs a teaching conference, the Lilly Conference, uh, which has been um, uh, one of my favorite professional experiences uh, presenting at the Lilly Conference. It's a wonderful opportunity to meet people who are like-minded. Um, and uh, I have seen Todd in a variety of contexts over the years. Um, and I just wanted to talk to him a little bit about some of the remote emergency teaching, remote teaching that, that uh, I've been talking about and get his take on it. Um, and uh, just have a, a quick conversation because I consider Todd an expert and someone who knows a lot about this. So Todd, thanks for coming. And I just wanted to start with um, a, a little bit of a conversation we had earlier about this, this swift pivot from in-class teaching to remote teaching. And if you could just for a minute or two talk a little bit about how um, six months ago we didn't see this coming and, and what's happened since. Well, yeah, and first of all, Chris, I appreciate um, the opportunity to come and uh, come be here and speak with you a little bit. And you're being a bit modest. Yes, we have that nice conference here. And Chris, one of our best keynote uh, presenters at the conference a couple years back, he did a great job. So appreciate that. So yeah, it's um, I, I find the whole kind of pivot to, and again, we love to call this, or uh, people love to now call this a remote emergency teaching because it's really not online learning because of the way that it's not really packaged as an online project. It's more of just picking up our, our classrooms and moving into the virtual um, world without really any warning. So, I mean, it's, it's really tough if, you, if you're not really sure what asynchronous versus synchronous is and, and suddenly you're supposed to be interacting with your students and we all just, you know, that's the reason we like teaching is having our students with us. But this the concept that we would all move into this world with essentially no notice is almost incomprehensible, but you know, we're faculty, it, we're doing it, which is really cool. Yeah, I, and I think that that's, I mean, what, the way you just described is really interesting because um, as you know, I'm at a small residential college and, and we uh, pride ourselves on our face-to-face -face instruction in small classes. And what you just described really describes many of our faculty who have had no experience in that online world. They've used some learning management system tools but not extensively, they've used some, but what we really have going for us is the connection between faculty and students and to make that transition into um, this remote emergency teaching has been a challenge. And what are you hearing from uh, other schools who have gone through this? Have you, are you hearing in the field um, students struggling, positive experiences from faculty? Because I can tell you from our student standpoint, we have a, um, we have a team of people working with students to talk to them about what's going on and, and how they're receiving things. And one of the comments students make is they feel like work has ramped up. Um, we tried to explain to them they don't have the three days a week in class. So there is going to be a bit of an increase in work. But, but I just, I'm sort of curious what your sense is and what you've heard. Well, it's, it's a lot of people struggling. I mean, just really a lot of people struggling. And so, you know, to get down to the basic level of it, we could look at long-term potentiation whole concept that um, as you do something, the neuronal pathway for which you are doing becomes easier and easier to fire. And it's really the foundation for all learning. And the concept is, as you do something, it gets easier, but we forget oftentimes that means when you start doing something is the most difficult time. So individuals have now had to teach in a way they've never taught before. So even if you've taught for 20 years, you're now teaching in a fundamentally different way. It is going to be hard. Students who have never learned under this framework, it's going to be hard. So it will be hard and it has been hard. What I haven't heard a lot of people talk about is as this is done, of course, which is the long-term potentiation thing again, as it's done, it does become easier and easier. And so, you know, if we could kind of let go of the fact that it is so hard at the beginning and look at where are we gaining and how are we moving forward, we should see some capacity open up and be able to do some other things. Now, the, the big one I want to just say quickly here, so many people are focused on how difficult and how challenging it is. I am hearing stories here and there about some wonderful things that are happening. Faculty members who are checking in with their students with just chat times. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got your class that runs from 8 to 9 or 10 to, 10 to 12, a 10 to 12 class. So you say to the students, if you want to log in at, at 930, I'm going to be there and we can just talk. And students logging in and saying, just having great conversations because they're stressed out. Keep in mind for a lot of students, the college, the reason they come to your fabulous place 
is that it's a fabulous place. And when they go home, it's a different world. Um, I've had students before that on, on Thanksgiving break are sad that they had to go home for Thanksgiving break, leave their friends, leave the dorm, leave everything that they knew and go back to their home, which was quite chaotic at times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've got students now going in environments. We shouldn't assume they're all going home to fabulous places. Some of these students are going to live in cars. I saw a study recently, 11% of university students, 20% of community college students who don't have enough money to, to eat regularly. And so this is hard on them, but as hard as it is, we're seeing some great times when there's some really good connections between faculty and students where they're showing some real care for each other. That's, that's great, Todd. And, and thanks for your comments. It really fits in nicely with some of the messages that we're trying to get across to faculty. And what you said, I think, really supports uh, the, the, the efforts of Springfield College. So thanks, Todd. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Chris. Great chatting with you. you too.